Hello, it's Keith here, and this is the third of the simple series of my programming tutorials. Now, this series, we do a single assembly file, so it's hopefully easier to, for you to work with in my multi-platform series. We do something very simple for people who are looking to start writing their own game or program, and they just need a few basics to get started on, and then they're going to build their own stuff. So today, we're going to look at the simple way of getting some graphics onto the screen, at least as simply as I can do it with the Enterprise, because it's a little bit tricky, but um, we'll get it. We'll get going reasonably easily, hopefully. And as I say, you can download the source code from my website and have a go with it yourself. So let's have a look at the code actually running and then we'll go over the code and see how it actually works. So I've got this massive window here with this tiny little smiley face. So this is an 8 by 8 sprite here. So if you were starting a simple game, maybe this would be enough for you. And of course, if you were looking to build a simple tile map or something, you could use this as the basis for the code to do that. We're going to look at a slightly larger sprite later on. So these two examples will hopefully be some help to you. Okay, so let's get started then. So this is the enterprise example here. Now we're starting our code at hexadecimal F0 here, and we need to build a header for our file. And that's what we're doing here. So this needs to be in the file for it to work properly. Now, if you don't know how to make a file, please see the enterprise episode of the Hello World series where we looked at the absolute basics of compiling and things. We're just gonna look at this code here. So now our program needs to start. So we've got the start address here. We need this for the length calculation here. And this is going to be effectively hexadecimal 100 in memory because this was the header here. So the first thing we're doing is we're loading a stack pointer and we're pointing the stack pointer immediately before our file starts. So it'll start overwriting the bit of memory before the system calls the OSTs and things. But this should be plenty for general purposes. I think you'll probably find that's fine. And then we're going to run a very complicated screen initialization routine. Now, I... I got this from the um, Enterprise Forever forums. The, this is sort of on there, and I've not really changed it very much, so, and we're not going to go over it today. But essentially, what we're doing is we're demanding from the operating system a bank of memory that we can use for our screen, and then we're turning that screen on. So we're not going to go into it. I covered it in my bitmap series, and I, you can just use this as is, and you won't need to worry about how it works. You can just know that it does work. Now, the enterprise uses a set of definitions to define the shape and settings of the screen. So this is going to be a bit more interesting. So um, we're defining the height of the screen, 200 lines here. We're setting up the screen itself here. Now, the ones you may want to play with would be the color here. So we're using mode one here for color mode, which is exactly the same format as the Amstrad CPC. There's also a 16 color mode, which is also exactly the same as the CPC. There's a 256 color mode, which is half the resolution of the 16 color mode, but it has 256 colors. Now, the way the colors work, we can only define up to eight colors. Now, in the mode we're using today, we're only using the four color mode, so that's not a problem. The four colors are defined just here, and you can see the rather odd bit layout of those colors just here. But in the 16 color mode, we can only define the eight colors, and then there's a bias offset which changes the colors according to a sort of tweak. But as I say, I'm kind of recommending you use the four color mode here. And then we've got some lines here to define the shape of the screen. So we're going to be having a 320 by 200 screen, again, identical to an Amstrad CPC. But you would be messing with this if you're changing your colors, changing your screen mode, or changing the size of the screen. But if you're just happy with a CPC screen in mode one, or as it would be called on the CPC, then this is going to be all you're going to need. And that's kind of what I'm recommending we make a start with. OK, so what are we actually going to do? Well, we've got a simple sprite here. It's a smiley face, as you just saw. And the configuration is that the sprite is split into two bit planes. So effectively, this is bit zero of four pixels. And then this is bit one here. And so you can see here, if there's only a, a one in the zero part, then we are setting color one. But if there's a one in the right hand side and a one in the left hand side, that would make it color three. I'm just failing to select there. That. So if there's a one here and a one here, that would make it a three. So the two kind of combined with bit zero and bit one together to select the colors. So that's how we are going to work with this example. Now, if you want to create your own sprites, I do have a useful tool that you can use. Now, this is my Acu Sprite Editor. It's free and it's open source, and I develop it alongside my tutorials. I originally wrote it to make the Chi Reacomers game. Now, this is the test sprite we're going to see later, but you can just go to the Z80 option here, LN Enterprise, File and Save as Raw Bitmap, and that will give you the file format in the correct format for this screen here. And this program doesn't just support mode 
one, it also supports the um, 16 color mode, mode zero, and you can see that just here, it's half the resolution. It doesn't support the 256 color mode just yet. It's not something I've ever looked at on the Enterprise. Uh, if you're really interested in that, please let me know. I guess maybe I'll do it. Anyway, that's not what we're gonna be looking at today. So we've got our test break data here, and we're loading that into DE here. Now we've got this command, get screen position. This is gonna be the first thing we're looking at. We say we're just gonna skip over screen in it and just trust it does the job for us. So we're specifying an X position and a Y position here in BC, and then we call get screen pause. And this is calculating the memory address of the screen based on the X and Y position. Now each screen line is 80 bytes wide because it's 320 pixels, four pixels per byte. So we need to multiply the Y position by 80 or hexadecimal 50, and then we need to add the X position, and then we need to add the start address of the screen, which like on the CPC is C000. Now we don't have a multiply on the Z80, so what we do is we actually load in and then we bit shift into the equivalent positions of the amount we want to multiply by. So 80 in binary would be 0101 here. And so what we're doing is we're shifting to these two positions, you can see just here, and then we're doing an addition, combining them together. Now this is the kind of thing, I, I'm sure you're probably confused by this, because honestly I couldn't write this a while ago when I started learning things. So again, this is something I'm hoping you can just use as is to get you started, and you don't need to worry about really how it works, because it should work just fine for you. So that's how we calculate the first line of our screen when we start drawing the sprite, but after each line we need to move down a line. And so we need a, a command to automatically calculate the next line position. Now, on the Enterprise, it's actually pretty easy. All we need to do is add 80 hexadecimal 50 to the line position. And if we've overflowed the L part, the low part of our pair, then we need to increment the H part, the high part. And so that will move us down a line based on our previous position. Now it comes to the actual code that's gonna do the drawing of the sprite. Now, each line of this example is just two bytes. So we're gonna use B as a, a line counter for each Y line. But then for the X lines, we just need to write two bytes. So we're doing that here, loading in a byte here from the sprite, writing it to the screen, increasing both counters, loading in a byte, writing it to the screen, increasing the source counter of the sprite here. And then we backed up HL here, so we had the left-hand side of the sprite. We restore it here, we calculate the next line, and then we re decrease B, repeating to draw the next line of the sprite. So all we need to do to draw that smiley face, not so bad really. Now let's have a look at this more advanced example. It's basically the same, very little has changed here. So now we've got our little Chibiko character here. And you should recognize this because it was exported straight out of this, although not in that screen mode. There it is, it's just that sprite. I've just got a different palette here. Now I've exported the file with the option I showed you just a moment ago in my AcroSprite editor. So this is straight out of AcroSprite editor. We're specifying the path here to, to get that data. Now the sprite is 48 lines tall and it's 48 pixels wide. But because uh, we're working in bytes and there's four pixels per byte, then it's 12 bytes wide. Now this time we're gonna use C here as our internal loop counter for the X line, so for each byte of the line. And we're gonna use the B counter again for our lines. So this time we're gonna just read in a byte, write it to the screen, increase both counters, and then decrease our counter until we've drawn a line. And then again, we're gonna draw, move down to the next line, calc and then repeat again. And that's really all there is to it. So we're just drawing our sprite here. And so, you know, you could use this code for bigger sprites or multiple sprites, just change the source address and the memory location and the XY location, and that, you know, that will get you started with some nice simple software sprites. So there we go, I hope you found this interesting. Um, that's really all we're gonna to cover today. We'll be coming back to the Enterprise again later in this simple series. We're going to be looking at some simple key input and things, and you know, we'll, we'll try and build up the very basics of a little game that you could start to work with. Anyway, thanks for watching today, and goodbye. If you enjoyed today's lesson, please check out my website. We've got tutorials, source code, and development tools for 6502, 68000, and Z80 systems, and a lot more systems coming in the future. We're going to be covering the 8086 and the ARM and a few other things as well going forward. And if you've liked this lesson, if you've got questions, comments, or suggestions on how it could be made better, please consider signing up to my forum. It's free, of course, and you can come along here and you can make suggestions, you can ask questions. 
And if you've got assembly projects you're working on, please let us know what they are. Maybe show off a few screenshots, tell us what things you've found interesting or what tricks you've come up with, because we'd love to know about it. Anyway, thanks for watching today and goodbye.